In my mind, the recalls were a manifestation of overreach of government. End of story. I remember sitting on the House floor watching one of the representatives who was a sponsor of the magazine bill, the mag magazine ban bill, I don't know how you want to phrase that, but, and she said, I will not allow anyone to own those kinds of magazines. Ask yourself who she works for. And where does she get off saying she's not going to allow us to have what we believe we need to protect ourselves and our families? I'm going to start by talking about the recalls because I agree with Ken that they're about government overreach, but I don't think they're much about guns, quite frankly. Guns was a very convenient noun. Nouns work. People know what guns are, although I took me forever to figure out what a magazine was, and I'm still a little confused by it. I mean, here's what's weird. If you look at some of those gun bills, the one about the concealed carry on campus, that was in, began in, in, in March after a Supreme Court decision. And had there been no Aurora and no Newtown, Connecticut, and no package of gun bills, that thing would have passed with Republican opposition, but it wouldn't have been a national rallying cry. I think overreach is a, is a term that, um, that I disagree with to a degree because what Democrats, I think, have done well is they've, they were elected uh, to be the majority by the voters in 2012, and they did what they told the voters they were going to do. Now, some people didn't like that, and that's the way politics works, but uh, they didn't do anything they didn't say they were going to do. My message in, in these remarks would be don't misunderstand the recalls. Uh, the recalls, in my opinion, were about two issues. Uh, one, as Ken has properly identified, I believe, is overreach, and the second was the Second Amendment. So really what you have is that's a single-issue election, and I think the GOP can be successful in a lot of single-issue elections. Unfortunately for the GOP, a single-issue election is not the same as a candidate. It's very, very different. And so if you ask Pueblo Democrats how they feel about the Second Amendment, you'll get the result that we got. Um, but when you aggregate all of the issues that a candidate must plow through uh, to achieve uh, a statewide office, uh, and all of these become a factor, it then becomes very problematic for those candidates. The school board elections that you were talking about, I just want to tell a real quick story. Douglas County, we got some very, very strong school board members in a few years ago. And they immediately went out into the marketplace nationwide to look for a program, one that would help better educate their kids. Guess what they found? Nothing. Nothing. They found nothing. So what did they do? They built their own. They came up with their own. They said, okay, these are the outcomes that we're looking for. We want to educate our children. And so they went out and built their own. That's called being an entrepreneur. That's called being an American, ladies and gentlemen. Now that program that they put together and the things that they did with the unions and to affect change in their school district is a model that a lot of school districts throughout the country are now following. Not, not only the school board elections, but we have the Amendment 66 that was the love child, if you will, of SB 20, or 213, which was the School Reform Act. The School Reform Act really isn't school reform, but what it does do is it sets up this brand new bureaucracy. But don't worry about that. It only costs $300 million a year. It's a billion dollar a year, every year, progressive tax increase. I do think it's interesting that Douglas County touts the study saying how great Douglas County is, but without pointing out that the study was paid for by the Douglas County Education Foundation. I think that, folks, that's called a conflict of interest. I do think it's interesting to me that the rural school group has endorsed this, which I... I think would be interesting because you think it would be the opposite, but a lot of these school districts are already at four days a week and are struggling for funding. Uh, Mike Johnston, who is the Denver senator, who's really kind of the mastermind of this. Now, normally you wouldn't think a guy who was out pushing a billion dollar tax increase, $950 million, but uh, would be, be pushed to be running for this. But he, when he talked to us, had some interesting points about because of the way the tax structure has changed with Gallagher and everything else, every year the burden on the state gets more and more, and it's less on the districts. And he talked about what his parents had to invest in education 
when he was in high school and how it's so much less or so much more than what he has to invest for his three children just because of the way the formulas have gone. Amendment 66 is a redistribution of wealth scheme. It is that, but you're gonna see Adams County and Denver County reap some benefits. They are going to have an increase in the funding to their students. Um, so no, I don't, I don't know that there's gonna be more money going out to the rural communities so much as it will Adams County and Denver County. They're going to be net beneficiaries. There are going to be some counties that are gonna have a 47, or they're gonna have a massive increase in their taxes, and they will re they'll actually receive less money than they are now. There have been two studies that came out in the last year that have shown that uh, parts of Weld County, uh, particularly Erie, uh, have a uh, worse air quality than Houston, uh, and it's directly attributable. They, they're able to separate the uh, emissions that, that come from vehicles and the type of emissions that come from, okay. <clears throat> from, from wells. And so from a local perspective, I, I, I can sympathize with, with the, uh, the counties and the cities because there's nothing they can do. Uh, it, it's Colorado law that, that um, oil and gas drilling is mandated by the state of Colorado. The one issue that is very much prosperity driven right now is the fracking debate in Colorado. In my opinion, that is, that is a di directly a debate on the prosperity uh, uh, of this country, and not, not just the prosperity, but if, if America can start producing enough liquid natural gas that it can become an exporter, the, the, what we get uh, as a political side effect of the, I mean, the, the increased national security, the way we're able to deleverage China and Russia as power, as, as literally controlling the levers of power over their neighbors because they hold the throttle, because they literally hold the siphon at the energy nozzle, they won't have that anymore. As we come around to 2014, I, I, I'm really interested in watching how this plays out and, and uh, to, to what degree wins out, um, whether it's, it's ideology above all or whether there's some form of compromise where uh, candidates get through the re Republican primaries that, that have a chance at winning in November uh, because a, another round, another election like, like 2012, um, and Republicans are, are, are getting close to being in a position where they're looking at minority status for a while. The Democrats still completely hold the upper hand in one area, and that is their willing to willingness to compromise to put party ahead of any single faction's desires. Um, in my mind, they've been better at this for the last decade, and um, the, the, the genius of our nation, which most of us, which all of us, I'm sure, in this room celebrate, is the wisdom of our founders, and the Electoral College forces compromise. It forces it. It's why we have a two-party system, is because of the Electoral College. And if your faction isn't willing to make a small sacrifice for the overall power of the party, um, you do face minority status for a long time. What we've seen come out of the recalls, what we've seen going into the, the recall for uh, effort against Evie Hudak is, is really a identity crisis among the Republican Party, and that will lead into 2014 how the, uh, the election plays out uh, from U.S. Senate and governor all the way down to state legislators and, and local municipal races. The Republican Party does have an identity crisis. You've got people like me on the far right. You've got people that are moderates and try to placate the middle. But you know, a lot of the people, in my opinion, that are now independents are independents because they've lost faith in the party. They don't trust it anymore. They don't know what it stands for. And they are bleeding for something to believe in. Well, you have to ask yourself a question. Are you with the Ted Cruz Republicans or the John McCain and Lindsey Graham Republicans? Well, I know where I stand, but I think if the party had a better message that they were actually sticking to, a lot more people would be voting Republican. 